Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about section 3.2 and we are going to discuss the concept of slope. Okay? Slope. You know, what is slope in your own words? Well, many of you guys will talk about slope and say, well, slope, that's easy. Slope is rise over run. Okay? Or you'll say, slope is M. Well, I'm not sure what that means, but you could do that. There is a portion of algebra where slope is m, okay? But slope is really, it's a rate of change. It's a steepness. Uh, visually, certainly it's a steepness. But a, a rate of change is how we generally try and um, define slope. How quickly something changes uh, over time or some other uh, type of concept, okay? A rate of pay, how much you get paid, is a rate of change. There's a steepness or a slope uh, in terms of earning money. Uh, how fast you run or how fast you drive, those are all rates of change. So how quickly something changes. Okay. So slope um, on the coordinate plane, on the Cartesian plane, a uh, slope, a positive slope, would be something that as you read, going from left to right, that purple line has a positive slope. So it's rising as you read from left to right. That would be a positive slope. Something with a negative slope, well, as, again, as you read from left to right, it is uh, going down. Okay? So here we have, you know, the red line is something that has a negative slope. That particular line has a negative slope. Because they're going down as we proceed from left to right. They seem to be going down. Okay? So slope. Algebraically, we define slope. Uh, yes, M. You'll see that in one of our formats for slope. Slope is rise over run. Okay? Uh, if we have two ordered pairs, uh, let's say we have two ordered pairs, uh, x1, y1, and another ordered pair, x2, y2, we can calculate slope by subtracting one of the y coordinates from the other and dividing it by the difference of one of the x coordinates from the other. Be careful with y2 and y1. If we start with y2, if we start with this ordered pair on the right-hand side, we take y2 minus y1, we can go back to that same ordered pair, x2 minus x1. So that's really all those subscripts mean. It means if we start with the y-coordinate of one ordered pair, we have to use the x-coordinate of that ordered pair in the, in the same spot. Okay, so we couldn't use x1 down here minus y1. We wouldn't get correct slope. So, and then another way you'll see slope written is this change in y divided by change in x. And that triangle, I think we've seen this before, that is just kind of a symbol for change. So delta or change. Change in y over change in x. Again, slope is rise over run. Rise is y's. So we have the y's on top. So we rise to the top. So we always know y's divided by x's. So given two ordered pairs, we can always calculate our slope. Um, and simply taking our y coordinate and subtracting one from the other. So starting with our y's, I take negative 5 minus 9. So let's go ahead, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So negative 5 minus 9, all divided by 3. I've got to go back to that same ordered pair. 3 minus a minus 6. So in calculating our slope, negative 5 minus 9, that would be negative 14, divided by 3 plus 6, which is 9. So our slope, negative 14. Well, 
one of the things that sometimes we get confused about is the slope of a horizontal line versus a slope of a vertical line. Okay, so let's take a look at this visually. Let's look at our horizontal line. Horizontal line, okay, straight line, something like that. So think about a roller coaster. If we're on a roller coaster and it's just going just along, flat along the ground like this, moving straight, um, you know, no pitch at all, you should be careful with that, but just along a, a, no hills or anything, uh, that's not much fun. That is zero fun. That is not a lot of fun. So let's say we we're on a roller coaster. Now we got something that uh, has a little bit of pitch to it. That's a little bit more fun, isn't it? That's more fun. Okay, so now we're going downhill, so we're a little bit more fun. Um, how about if it gets a little steeper? Wow, that's even more fun. Wow, I really like that. That is more fun. Okay, I'm really excited. I'm enjoying that. That's steep. That's thrilling kind of fun. But now, what if I just go drop straight down like that? How fun is that? Now my roller coaster, just a vertical line. I'm going straight down. That's an indescribable amount of fun. Undefined fun. I can't, I had so much fun, I can't even define it. So you can see here, as we go through our, as our roller coaster goes from something that's just flat and horizontal, not a lot of fun, but as it gets more and more vertical, tougher and tougher to describe, now we've got an undefined amount of fun. So now we know if we have a line that's perfectly vertical like that, okay? So say that might be, I think that's x is negative, x is negative 7. That particular line is an undefined amount of fun. That is an undefined slope. Wow. A graph of a horizontal line, that's y equals y equals 3, okay? Well, that's 0 fun. That's not too much fun. Zero fun. That's a little better. Not jumping around. So that is zero fun, okay? And you'll also see this undefined slope. You'll talk about that. That is no slope, okay? But I don't like using no slope too much. That's algebraically, that's correct to say no slope for undefined, but we often confuse no or none with zero, and they're not the same. So I prefer undefined versus zero. And how does this look mathematically? How does that work? Well, rise over run, that's our, our change in y over our change in x. So let's take a look at our, our equation here. At y equals 3, our blue line, well, if y is always 3, is there any change in y? No, there isn't. y is always 3, so there's no change in y, so we have 0 over... Now we could have a bunch of change in it in x, some particular number. Zero divided by a number, well, that is zero. Whereas if we have the equation x equals negative seven, well, our slope to calculate slope, change in y over change in x, okay. Let's take a look at that. Change in x. x is always negative 7. Well, it doesn't matter what y is. x is always negative 7. So our change in x is 0. We're going to have some number on the top. Well, 0 is underneath. So that particular slope is undefined. So, sure enough. x, a vertical line, has an undefined. Defined slope, 
because there is zero change in x and we have zero in the denominator of our slope equation and um, so that makes makes a lot of sense so the sooner you can you know recognize the difference between zero slope and undefined slope and realize that zero in the numerator is zero zero underneath and the denominator is undefined the better your math career is going to be. So let's move on. Let's talk about uh, parallel lines and perpendicular lines. Well, parallel lines, you guys know parallel lines never meet. So they, if they never meet, they must have the same steepness or the same pitch, okay, or the same rate of change. Well, if they have the same steepness, same pitch and they never meet, they must have the same slope. So if two lines have the same slope, then they're parallel, and if two lines are parallel, then they must have the same slope. Perpendicular, perpendicular lines, those are a little bit different animal. Perpendicular lines, of course, do meet, okay? But they meet in a, in a unique way. They meet and form right angles. We know that from our geometry. So they meet and form right angles. And we, you can, we can use the symbol like that for perpendicular. Okay? Or you might recall the, that right angle box that we did in geometry as well, showing that, oh, those are right angles, they're perpendicular. Well, Obviously, they have different slopes. In fact, if perpendicular lines, one line is going to have a positive slope and one is going to have negative. Uh, for the most part, that's how that's going to work. So their signs are opposites, but their slopes are different too. For perpendicular, we want to look for opposite reciprocal slopes. So the opposite reciprocal. So opposite refers to the sign, positive or negative, and reciprocal refers to the fraction. Okay, and we know that reciprocals, we flip the fraction. So the fraction has got to be flipped. So perpendicular lines, if we have lines with a couple of slopes, Okay, so if one line has a slope of uh, 7 fourths, the slope of the perpendicular line must equal negative 4 sevenths. They have opposite signs, one is positive and one is negative, and we flip the fraction, 7 fourths, okay, becomes 4 sevenths. So if one line had a slope of 2, the slope of the perpendicular line would be negative 1 half.